Heavenly Father, thank you for that promise from your word. You desire us to bring all things to you that you provide. And so, Lord, open our hearts to your word today as we uh, just deal with all the things that life brings and knowing that you care. And uh, as we pray, as we bring things to you, you hear us, you answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this theme of Jesus and anxiety is going to be our overarching theme uh, for these next, uh, next about a total of four weeks as we get closer and closer to Easter, as we move towards the cross. And I don't know, probably just looking at that image gives you a little anxiety, right? Dark clouds, people looking up, wondering what's going to happen next. And well, I didn't really want to make more stress upon you or anything, but I hope it communicates a point that, yeah, there's, there's worry, there's anxiety And the Lord's right in there with us in whatever we go through. And so the themes that we're going to talk about for today reflect the passage from Philippians that I'll read and also reference that Matthew 6 passage. So if you want to open your Bibles or uh, grab one, they're out in the entry area every Sunday as well. This theme was one that we just dove into pretty deep last Sunday as we showed that movie Angst. And uh, we had the viewing of this movie that deals with anxiety and things that young and old face. It was kind of focused a lot upon our, our youth and, and what many are going through. Uh, but it's really relevant to all of us. And I think we received a pretty good response because there were a lot of people that came. This place was pretty full. There was about 160, 170 people here from all over the community, from our church, of course, as well as others. And I know Chris Williams did a lot to really get that word out and make it happen, and and Hillary with our student ministries too. So lots of good things came of that. We had uh, questions that people were able to ask. Um, There was our prayer teams that were here to pray with others. Uh, Mike led a worship song at the end that focused us on Jesus and the reason that we can't have hope in the midst of anxiety. And I think it just it was a good move as I was thinking about this to let's talk about this. Let's, let's, let's address it over these next uh, few weeks in the Lent season as we really move towards the cross. Jesus and worry. And, and was there any anxiety around Jesus and his followers as the days were coming closer and closer to the cross? Was there, they were asking questions. Um, we'll look at some passages that show how Jesus faced even his own anxiety. So uh, let's just uh, dive in this together. And uh, I want to start by asking you, uh, what keeps you up at night? What do you worry about? And if we're honest, again, everyone battles with anxiety in some form. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night. It was about 3.30 a.m. And I couldn't go to sleep. And I couldn't go to sleep. And I couldn't go to sleep. I hate that. I wake up in the middle of the night, and it's like, oh, no, it's only 3.30. I was, like, hoping it was, like, 6.30, and I was just up. So then I'm just awake, and it doesn't happen a lot, but from time to time. um, I don't know. I might be the only one, perhaps. A few others sometimes. Okay, okay. A couple of us. Um, So I just, eventually, I just went downstairs, and, you know, everybody in the house was able to sleep. Even the dog was able to sleep but not me. And, you know, I, I kind of just started thinking about stuff, you know, or in the process of moving, in, uh, buying, hopefully, offering and uh, putting an offer in and buying a home really soon now. Appreciate your prayers. It's getting close. Uh, so that kind of stuff's worrying me. And then, you know, some other stuff about our kids and their distance away from us and health stuff and other things. And middle of the night is not a good time to think. It just compounds. Uh, and, uh, you know, eventually I was doing some reading and, and, and prayer, and I just got so tired again that I was able to go back to sleep. But uh, again, ah, it's a battle that maybe we go through from time to time. The concerns, the burdens, the worries, the cares of this life. And even Jesus battled with this himself. I think that uh, we need to remember that uh, if you wrestle with anxiety and worry and anxious thoughts, 
doesn't mean you're not a Christian or you're not a good Christian. As some people think, oh, if I just had more faith, I wouldn't worry. Well, uh, Christians battle anxiety. Again, Jesus battled anxiety. What did he pray when he was nearing the cross? Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. He was sweating drops of blood, anticipating what it would be to take the weight of sin and death upon himself for the sake of the world. Heavy. And Jesus faced the fears, the anxious moments, fought through them, surrendered them to a loving God, our Heavenly Father, and anxiety did not win. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate our life. It comes with life, but don't let it dominate your life. And as I look at this passage from Philippians 4, a theme that I'd like us to think about today is, okay then, how do I live a life characterized by calm and not chaos, by peace and not panic? Aren't those opposites? Calm, chaos. I think I'd choose calm, right? Uh, peace, panic. Uh, let's see. Let's choose peace, right? Everybody on the same page with me? I think that's just a given, isn't it? Right? Who wants chaos and panic? Stuff comes and we've got to deal with it. But as we, as we look closer to God's word, let's look at this uh, prescription that we're given from Philippians 4. So I'm going to read uh, Philippians 4. Uh, Verses 4 through 8, if you want to listen or follow along with me in your Bible. Paul writes in Philippians 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Does that say? And the God of peace will be with you. Everybody say with me, peace. Peace. Peace is just a peaceful word. It just describes itself. You just say it. There was a youth director, a friend of mine, back quite a few years ago. Whenever he was trying to, you know, organize a bunch of chaotic kids, he'd do that. He'd go, peace. And they'd all say after him, peace. Peace. You know, it's, it's just, it just happens when you say it. Well, easier said than just said. Okay, easier done than just said. But still, something about that word. Right? And that's what God promises. The God of peace will be with you. Some have said that we currently live in the most anxious nation on the planet. And Paul is writing, don't be anxious about anything Joel, got it? Done, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but really, all the things in our world, and are really in our own culture today, all the things we have that are good things, okay, science, scientific advances, technology advances, health care, we're just comfortable and carefree, right? Everything's just taken care of for us. Isn't that great? You've got, you know, your... Wi-Fi, Nest, connected home. You just press a button and lights go off. Or <laughs> if the Wi-Fi works, where else the internet's down? I mean, no. It's it's been said that um, uh, what we call the third world, which is really first world, because most people are in what we call third world conditions. But I won't go there. Third world citizens have way less anxiety than us. And whenever people come from another, let's say we call it underdeveloped country, they come to visit or to live in the United States, what do you think goes up in their life? Yeah, blood pressure, stress levels, trying to make it work. Uh, Another 
crazy stat of uh, college students. Let's say the poll is done. Let's say 200,000 incoming freshmen. All-time lows in mental health. The average child has the same anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the 1950s. Get that. They'd be checked in if they were in the 50s. <laughs> our own kids or ourselves probably put it, put it to ourselves. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting tense just reading this stuff. So I, gotta, I, I need to hear some relaxing music or get a massage. No, I, I don't like massages, but that's another story. <laughs> so there was this man that was talking to his psychiatrist. And uh, he had this recurring dream. And he says, Doctor, in, in this dream, all I have in this dream are two things. I see this, this like, REI kind of cool recent model, like, four-man tent, camping tent. And then I see this, like, Native American unique kind of teepee. And, you know, oh, boy, this sounds like it's deep, right? And the doctor says, oh, that's easy. You're two tents. Oh. Come on, everybody groan a little, oh, that's awful. Thank you. That's very true. It is awful. <laughs> okay, well, lighten up, everybody. Come on, you're too tense, all right? Give me a break. <laughs> but, understandably, any heavy anxiety or worry or challenging times we're going, going through, it's not just going to be dismissed and all better in one message, one sermon, or one book one speech, whatever, one therapist session. And uh, maybe there are more steps that are needed. If a person's going through it, we talked about that at the, at the angst showing and the presenter shared carefully. You know, there may be more, you know, prescriptions, doctor visits, things that might be helpful for you in overcoming this. We need other people, professionals, one another, prayer, the Lord, all this, all these are important. And we all need a pretty regular dose of Philippians 4, 4 through 8, right? That medicine is absolutely essential. And even this reminder, don't be anxious for anything. You know, it starts to get you more anxious because you feel anxious, and then you feel bad about being anxious. But um, don't be anxious about anything, as Paul writes. And, and, you know, it's always interesting unpacking at least a little bit more of the meaning of the words and the scriptures and the original languages. And, you know, Paul's saying just don't be in this perpetual state of anxiety where you're just continually wound up. Yes, those times are going to come and go, but don't just let it drive you, right? Don't let it own you. Uh, Jesus, uh, you know, Paul received teaching from Jesus himself, received, uh, you know, Jesus and Jesus' teachings, and Jesus said in Matthew 6, uh, verses 25 through 7, he said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Don't be in this perpetual state of anxiety about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And then here's the key verse, 27. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Hmm. Maybe the opposite. If worry takes over, maybe our lives are shortened through all the worry and stress. So Jesus addressed it directly. And that reminder again, as we think about, okay, our anxious nation and all these challenges. Yes, anxiety will come, but it doesn't have to dominate your life. It doesn't have to dominate. And Jesus continued to say in Matthew 6, which was where we received those beautiful um, words from the song we just sang. Matthew 6, verse 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Another timely verse. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen? Amen. 
I want to share with you uh, just a neat acrostic. I didn't make this up. Um, I was, uh, I've been reading through, and I've done a study through this uh, book, uh, Anxious for Nothing, by Max Lucado. How many of you have read or heard of that or gone through it? We have several uh, groups, people that are going through it right now. And in fact, um, Coco and uh, Chris Williams, our own Coco here at church, and Chris Williams are going to be uh, putting together a, a class called, based on this book, Anxious for Nothing, that I think may meet on Saturdays, unless that changes. But if you're interested in that, um, I think it's incredible. It's a great series, great book, bi- biblically based. Um, let me know, let Coco know, let Chris know if you'd like to be a part of a, a series, of, of a small group. We always like forming new groups and Bible study groups, community groups. So um, it's, it's coming. So if you'd like to be a part of that. Um, but again, this... this uh, Uh, acrostic, Calm, uh, comes from that author, Max Lucado. And I thought about it, and I had some thoughts I had to this, uh, these four key words. So I'd just like to go through Philippians 4 just for a moment and some of these key words and verses. So first of all, in Philippians 4, 4, it starts with, Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, Paul says, I'll say it again. I guess it's important. Rejoice. And so that first word is, Rejoice, or uh, to make it the calm acrostic, celebrate, okay? Celebrate, rejoice. And think about Paul. We just went through Colossians. Paul was living, let's see, in the resort off of some beautiful island and had meals served to him and uh, uh, all, the, all the pleasures of that resort, right? Uh, in prison. But think again of what he is writing here. Even in his state if anybody has a reason to be anxious, it's Paul. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And some have said the more you stare at a problem, the bigger it gets. You keep focusing on it, the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But we lift up our eyes to the Lord. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, creator of all things, maker of heaven and earth. Keep your eyes on the Lord. We walk to the cross, we look towards Easter, and we keep our eyes on Jesus. Paul focused on Christ, and we want to lift up our eyes off of the situation upon Jesus. And uh, another wise person once said, don't meditate on the mess, right? Look to Jesus. One of the things I think that keeps us in a rejoicing mode or a celebrating mode is be able to recall what God has done. And I think this can be done in many ways. You've probably done it yourself, maybe in some Bible study or some class, but just regularly, and I'd encourage you to do it at the start of the series now, list 10 things in your life that you're grateful for. Simple exercise, but what does it do? It moves our heart, right? It moves our heart from, oh, this is horrible, oh, this is bad, or how am I going to make it through this? You know what? Look at what I have. Look at what God has blessed me with. Just listing those 10 things and recalling them, right? As it's been said to you, anxiety and gratitude, think about this, anxiety and gratitude can't share the same heart. What would you rather be? A grateful heart or an anxious heart? Well, start it out by listing those things, right? Rejoice in the Lord, just like Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. I'll say it again, rejoice. And then, after that, okay, ask. Present your requests, right? Matthew 7, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. And so choose prayer over fear. Ask, bring it to God. And uh, um, the interesting thing about that is uh, prayer is the thing that Satan, the enemy, does not want us to do, right? That, he wants us to stay all wound up in our worries, Jesus says, ask, bring it to me. And uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again, Uh, there's a really interesting phrase that said, Satan mocks at our toil and all of our struggles and all that we do, but he trembles when we pray. The enemy trembles when we pray. And we're going to have a song about tremble. Jesus makes the darkness tremble. You're going to hear that in a a few times, so thank you to Mike for working on that. That's going to be a neat song that our worship team leads us in. Jesus makes the darkness tremble, removes it. 
The third item that uh, folk will focus on here is then leave. Okay, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious in it about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Give them to God. Um, have you ever had to take something to a repair place to have it fixed? Anybody ever had to have a car repaired, for example? Okay, probably in some degree, or else maybe you just junk them and get another one. Just buy another one off the shelf. That's great, too, if you can do that. Most of us have some variation between those, and maybe we ride them till the wheels fall off, like I do. Um, and you're in the repair shop every once in a while, and I've had to do that. I, and, you know, when I, whenever, whenever I go to the car repair shop, let's say I have to have, like, a transmission fixed or something like that, I bring my sleeping bag with me, and I bring the car to the, to the repair guy, and I go, and I'm just going to stay right here. Um, I maybe even sleep in the car while you fix it, because I, I, I want to make sure it's all, all done right. So I'm just going to bring my sleeping bag. I'm going to stay in the repair shop for the next three days. Is that okay? And, yeah. I don't do that. That would be ridiculous, right? But why then when we pray, do we kind of say, oh, we, we keep bringing it back. Oh, I, I still got to take care of that, right, God? Um, you know, I'm here till it's fixed, I'm, and we keep bringing it back, and we keep, when we give our request, leave it with God, okay? Give it to Him, and remember, when you're tempted to put your sleeping bag down back at the car repair shop, so to speak, oh, that's right, Jesus said, give it to me, and may, you're, may you have peace in your heart, leave it with God, it's, God. it's, it's with the maker of all things, the, the creator of the universe has got it. Okay, easier said than done, I know, but give it to God. Leave it, don't camp out at the car repair shop. This, why don't you repeat this with me? I know it's dangerous to just say I'll repeat every word because you sound, make you think you're just some kind of robot or something, but just, I think this is good for all of us. Say this with me. Say, I, I hereby, hereby resign, resign as ruler of the universe. For you. Doesn't that feel better? You're no longer in charge. Ah, oh, I gave it to the one who is in charge, right? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. So when you worry, say, oh. Then you say, oh, no, I don't have to worry. I left that at the repair shop. It's in God's, it's in God's court. And be thankful, right? Give it to him with thanksgiving. The next word is meditate. Meditate on the, the good things. You know, being thankful. Can't control our circumstances, but how do you think about them, right? How do you think? Meditate on what's right. And um, I was, I don't, this little story kind of relates, but kind of doesn't, but I'll just share it anyway. Um, I was a freshman at Pacific Lutheran University, and... I got the most awesome summer job I thought imaginable. I was going to earn thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, because I was going to move with my, my group of other students to Memphis, Tennessee, and sell books door to door. <laughs> Isn't that a great idea? <laughs> well, there was the 1% that made thousands and told us all how easy it was, like any scheme. <laughs> and so I drove down to Memphis with some friends, and and, uh, oh boy, I was about 12 hours a day. My, the, the guy that was really successful and did it all really well would drop me off at the street corner in Memphis at about 8 a.m. and say, I'll pick you up at 9 p.m. Good luck. Have fun. And there I was with my book bag and a map going through the streets of Memphis. And it uh, didn't take me a while to find out this is hard work. <laughs> door after door slammed in your face. Hey, I'm John. I'm one of these college... Boom. Kids trying to earn a living for the summer by selling. Nobody's listening. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, this. Okay, what? Uh, that um, they said that, you know, every once in a while, you would give your spiel, and maybe you'd sell something, maybe you wouldn't. And uh, if they didn't buy something, you'd at least say, hey, it's about lunchtime. I'm kind of hungry. Could you make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And it actually worked. That was the one thing they would do. They'd feel sorry for this little college kid. And, uh, and if you're really lucky, they'd, uh, they'd even give you like an iced tea or a lemonade. And that made your whole day, right? So that was one of the tricks that actually kind of worked. And uh, remember that old, old phrase, uh, when life gives you lemons, 
make lemonade. Well, my theme is if life gives you lemons, ask someone to make you lemonade. <laughs> okay, and then, because how do we think on the good things, right? How can we recall God's faithful? I can make it through this. Meditate on what is good and right and true and noble. Think about such things. A lot of people are facing a lot of heavy situations in life. I, I remember a funeral I did at the time. My previous church was one of the hardest ones I did. Uh, was of this, um, this woman, Regina. Her husband, Stuart, passed away of cancer, and they had two little kids, like ages like two and four. And it was a person I knew very well and had visited Stuart in the hospital and he had this cancer that just took over, and, and it just it knocked him out. And uh, I think of anybody that continued to, though, trust and continued to come to worship and bring her kids to our Christian school and just day after day just kept on keeping on in faith. And uh, even to this day, our daughter Megan is taking care of those two little kids as kind of a, she's a child care uh, nanny provider for them. But uh, she modeled that, you know, whatever that lemon thing was in life, you know, turned it into, I can do this, and God's faithful. Uh, Someone said, if life gives you lemons, well, you don't have to suck on them, right? And uh, that's the anxiety thing. We just keep it and that taste is just can't be can't be removed right but whatever is true noble right pure lovely think on these things so back to that restless night i want you to think about this as we close if you ever have a restless night let's trust in god's promises for us that will release anxiety that will carry us into rest and there's a prayer we're going to start our as we close in prayer we're going to I encourage you to pray that with me if you'd like to as we begin with prayer. And just put on, right? Keep on with those good things. We've got a prayer wall right outside on the other side of this wall. We're going to try to continue to build in that, especially over the Wednesdays. And maybe you can come and worship on Wednesdays. Bring your kids. We'll have children's activities. Julie's got things planned. So that prayer and praise night on Wednesdays. We'll have an updated prayer sheet every Wednesday based on the prayer requests that come in so we can pray for others. And Again, even if that series, Anxious for Nothing, is something on your heart that you'd like to participate in, uh, may that be a blessing to you as well. Wrestle with the questions in a good way that are on the back side of the sermon outline handout. Take those home with you. Uh, use those as you kind of process through this. Do that activity. Like ten things. What are the ten things I'm thankful for? Make that be a part of your prayer life even this week. But as we close in prayer, let's, let's, let's begin. If you'd like to pray that, that prayer with me that's uh, overhead, let's, let's pray those words together as we begin. God, I'm so anxious, I turn inside. Would you help me trust you with my night, with my day, with my life? Amen. So, Lord, as we reflect on your word today, Jesus, your words, the words of the Apostle Paul and Oh, may, it, uh, may they resonate within our heart. And we can leave those things with you that, that uh, seek to tear us apart and uh, cause us worry. And so, Lord, I pray for your church. Bless us, God, as we enter and continue in this season of, of Lent and this journey to the cross. May our eyes be focused on you and not simply on our problems and worries that we've got to work through and, and deal with. But, God, may our eyes, our eyes, our gaze be set upon you, Lord. God, we do pray for those in need, the people that are on our hearts today, the, the world around us that's so uh, changing all the time. And uh, we just lift up again any that are going through trials and struggles. God, we uh, just are thankful for your hand that walks with us, guides us through even death itself. And we lift up the Earnshaw family, Stan and Janelle, as they mourn the loss of Janelle's father. And have celebrated his life with the memorial yesterday and just continue to bless them and keep them. God, we pray for any going through just the depths of significant serious illness and we just uh, pray again, Lord, today for Dara Etzel and uh, bless her in the midst of the cancer that's recurred in her and bless her, bless her family and uh, keep you her healer and her strength. God, again, you hear our hearts, needs that are spoken or spoken silent, silently within our heart. You hear us as we pray. And uh, we receive, God, your promises for hope, for healing, for joy to be restored. And uh, guide us to do your will, Lord, as a church, to continue to bless uh, this world in need and many active hands and feet that are doing that daily 
Thank you, God, for all those, those that are laboring in your vineyard and blessing the world in need. Guide us, Lord, now to receive you once again as we celebrate communion and receive your promises in the bread and the wine, your body and blood, broken and poured out for us. In Jesus' name.